Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the precious metal verse. Today we're going to be talking about gold. Um, if you guys like the content, please go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and like the video. While we normally jump into the cryptoverse and talk about cryptocurrencies, we're going to be providing some of our data science models to other asset classes as we've talked about. And today we're looking at precious metals, uh, notably gold is, is what we're looking at. So go ahead and subscribe. Also check out the Telegram channel here and you can find a link to that in the description below as well as the premium list if you want access to exclusive content. So let's just go ahead and dive in. So what we have here is the price of gold, which is the white line. And then the green line is our logarithmic fit. So first of all, look at the y-axis. The y-axis is on a logarithmic scale. So it's going up 10x, 10x, and 10x. So each move from major tick to major tick is a 10x increase. This is so we can capture, you know, the moves of gold over a long period of time, so that you can you can see, you know, the what it's doing um, over, say, a decade. Otherwise, anything that was going on in this portion over here would be completely dwarfed by the prices today. This is why we use a logarithmic scale. So the idea is, can we can we identify, you know, a, a fair value of gold? And the way we did it with the total cryptocurrency market cap and the way we're applying the same methodology here is we just took the, the percent difference between the price and the regression, the, the logarithmic difference between those, those two, and minimized the sum over the entire um, uh, price history. And when you do that and you fit it to the equation 10 raised to the power A times L of X minus B, where X is time and A and B are fitted coefficients, then this is the equation you get, this green line that you see here. And the idea of the green line is to provide what, so, you know, what is the quote unquote fair value of gold. Um, obviously it's somewhat, you know, it's, it's, you know, somewhat arbitrary. I, I agree, but let's just, uh, let's just run with this and say, okay, this is our fair valuation price of gold. If we're above it, then we tend to be in our, you know, our overvalued territory. When we're below it, we tend to be in our undervalued territory. Right now, you can see we're, we're basically on the line. We're, we're just slightly above the line. Um, now, we've also talked about that it's, you know, it's good to add a general tolerance band there just because of, of, of small price fluctuations on any, on, you know, in any given year or so could really impact it, especially, um, you know, some of the ones early on. So what we did was we, we just gave it our, uh, you know, our, our tolerance band in a sense to say, okay, well, in this band, you know, if it's above it, we're overvalued. If it's below it, we're undervalued. And if we're in the middle of the band, then we could say we're, we're pretty much at our fair, fair value price of gold. So our current fair value, according to this model, is around $1,400. Now, what if we were to look at, you know, what if we take the percent difference between the price and the regression line? So this is, this is so that we can identify, you know, how it moves with respect to the regression line. This is what you get. Now we have a data point for every, every single year or every single month of every single year, I should say. Um, but note that on this chart, we're missing negative values. And the reason, uh, we're going to fix that in a minute. The reason is because um, we're looking at it on a logarithmic scale and it only plots positive values on a logarithmic scale unless you, you know, unless you go in and, and hack the, hack the code and, and present it in, in a different type of way, then this is what you get. And we are going to present it in a different way in a minute. So first of all, you can see we had a peak here, another peak, and then a third peak. So you, I mean, you can see each of these three triangles that formed from 19, you know, the, the early 1970s out to 1990. And then currently we are in the phase, you know, starting a little bit before 2010, you can see the first triangle formed. And the idea is, well, what if we are going to repeat what happened last time? Remember, these data points are not prices. They represent the percent difference between price and the regression line. But remember, the regression line is monotonically increasing. So it never goes down. So over time, you know, the price, as long as it's, you know, I mean, even if it's, even if the, the percent difference between the price and the regression line is not as much here as it was, say, here, because the regression line is continuing to increase monotonically, then the price would still be going up. So here's our, you know, this is our general, our, you know, our three triangles here. 
Um, this is just a basic trend line that I drew connecting from peak to peak and identifying that, you know, maybe maybe we come back up to this point, which would be, you know, I mean, currently the value the, the valuation shows that we're a little bit more than 20 percent overvalued in terms of our, our fair valuation. But that hasn't stopped us before from going to an overvaluation of, you know, 350 percent. So you have to take this into consideration. Another thing is let's plot the negative values. So these are the negative. So this shows when, when we're actually below the band. Um, so the red data points. And it's interesting that if you just, uh, you know, you, you can extend this out and basically connecting. I, I just drew a, I drew a pair, a line from here to, to here, and then just do another parallel one connecting this uh, point here. You can see our, you know, when we're undervalued, we don't really form uh, that same type of pattern. It, it, it tends to be more of a... Um, you know, a concave down pattern. So this one, you saw this small one over here. We had a larger concave down pattern uh, from 19, you know, the early 1900s out to 2010. Um, and now maybe we are inter entering another, you know, another long-term bull market. Um, it's obviously unclear yet, but with the, you know, with the current economic climate, gold does tend to do well, especially when there's a lot of uncertainty in traditional markets. So it would not surprise me if, if it continued to do well. So let's plot it a little bit more um, intuitively. So here we're just showing that if it's if it's a if it's at a hundred percent, then this is our fair valuation line. Um, if it's below a hundred, let's say it's at so forty percent or fifty percent, then it's then it means it's undervalued. So this would be you know fifty or sixty percent undervalued in the early two thousands. Um, and you can see that you know since twenty fifteen till twenty nineteen or so. We were at our fair valuation line only recently going above our fair valuation line. So if, if you're not familiar with this, uh, I just want to remind you that this is the cryptocurrency market cap regression line, our fair valuation line. And I'm showing this so we can relate it back to gold. You can see we, we draw these bands up here to identify speculative bubble peaks. And then the lower band down here is to identify, you know, our, our hopefully our absolute bottoms which typically is around negative 40% for the total cryptocurrency market cap. And if you draw the percent difference between the price and the regression line, you see this trend line here where, you know, each peak, while it, you know, the price is continuing to go up, but the volatility from the regression line continues to get, to get the, the volatility continues to go down. Um, and this is just a sign of the market maturing and um, becoming more efficient. So here you can you can compare this peak here to being overvalued here, this peak to this peak, and then this peak to this peak. So currently we're around a thousand percent overvalued. If you want to see more on the crypto stuff, then I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel because we talk about crypto a lot on my channel. So going back to gold, this is our our percent valuation here, and I I just drew you know a general trend line from from this peak to this peak. We don't really have. Um, I mean, because gold tends to move a lot slower than the cryptocurrency market, we don't have a ton of useful um, information in terms of, say, drawing macroscopic moves like this, where we're drawing it from the regression line to the price. Um, but, you know, if we were to come back up to the top here, then this could correspond to an overvaluation of, um, you know, a significant overvaluation. I mean, this is a hundred percent overvaluation here, so it could correspond to getting up to around a three hundred and fifty percent overvaluation again. Um, now, bear with me here because we're going to go through a few, a few different charts. So the first one is is we're just going to draw a trend line, and I'm not a huge fan of of imaginary lines, but I do find myself tending to draw them because I think they, I think it's interesting to to look at macroscopic views with them. Uh, more of the you know the smaller time frames i don't think they're as useful uh, but you know when we're looking at longer time frames i, I do think they can um, can provide some useful insights so first we're going to draw a trend line from the lower the, the lower price down here so you can't really see it because it's masked by the it's masked by the logarithmic regression line but if you look here you can see we're drawing it from our price the the, the price here um, connecting it uh, up to this peak over here and the bottom, we're drawing a parallel line to this line. You can see it's connecting here to when we break below, and then it also connects up here at the peak. So this is the first one. The second one is drawing the peak here down, the, basically this channel that we were in for you know a couple decades or so. The third one is drawing bottom to bottom to then support 
the, the bottom support here. And then the last one is just drawing peak to peak. If we put all these together, this is what it looks like. And because it's kind of hard for me to, you know, with, the, with all the dashes, it, it can be a little bit hard to look at. So I changed it to just straight lines. But typically when I'm drawing um, things that are not concrete and they're more, you know, a, a speculation, I usually draw it as a dashed line. Um, so here we are, try to stare at this chart for a minute without, uh, you know, just to try to get an idea of what's going on. Um, but a, a slightly bullish scenario for gold, so if we were slightly bullish, maybe we would come back up to the top of the purple band in the early 2020s. So if we were to do that, you can see that it would put us at a price just north of $2,000 because this data point or this line here corresponds to 2000 and we would be going slightly above that. And then that would be kind of keeping in line with the, the peak here to the peak here and then maybe drawing another peak here. Um, and then maybe we would return back down to our regression line. An even more bullish case uh, that we'll talk about again in another video, um, we'll look at trading view in another video. So again, subscribe to the channel if you, if you wanna follow along, would be moving up over the next say six or seven years to the red line window. So, you know, you can see we were in this red line down here, again right here, a third time here. Um, maybe we come back up. up. I don't think, you know, I, I, I think the chances that we come all the way back up here in, in only six years are, are fairly low. Um, but again, you know, the move that took us from 2000 to 2010 was, you know, I think it, it I mean, it was, a, it was a fairly significant move, like a 600% move. Um, and I mean, you can see we went from around, you know, $200 to over over $1,000 uh, during that decade or, you know, around that decade or so. So don't discount the fact that that could happen. Uh, maybe we don't make it into the band. Maybe it acts as resistance and we come and we come back down to our regression line later on. Uh, but I, I think it's interesting to, to, you know, to overlay all these different trend lines to try to get an idea of where the price might, you know, may be going. Um, obviously, our more, you know, our more neutral stance in terms of saying, well, we're not going to go up or down would just be to say, okay, well, maybe we'll just continue chugging along in our regression band, which remember, currently we're slightly above. So maybe we'll stay within the band um, for a few more years, or maybe we come back up to, you know, this longer term uh, purple trend line that connects this peak um, to this peak. So basically just connecting peak to peak and then maybe projecting that this could be the next peak. I know that this would correspond to just over $2,000. So this is our, our slightly bullish case. And then remember our, our more bullish case. So, uh, you know, the stars align for gold and, and maybe, maybe, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty in the markets and traditional markets for, you know, uh, several years and then people hedge their bets on gold. Um, if that were the case, then, you know, maybe maybe we are able to revisit our, our red line here in terms of, say, a resistance zone later on. And if that were the case, you know, this would correspond to around, say, $6,000 uh, per um, for, for gold. Uh, so $6,000, I know it seems like a lot, but again, it's actually fairly akin to the move we saw from, um, you know, the early 2000s to uh, approximately 10 years later. Um, so. Uh, this is this is the point of the video. I want to show you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the content I do try to focus um, on Creating graphs that you won't find other places so that I can provide something unique If you guys like the content you want to see more of it You want to see this applied to other asset classes Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below and remember I will provide some of these graphs if you want to download them on my telegram channel which you can find a link to in the description below and if you want access to um, a weekly newsletter, a weekly premium video, and um, a Google Sheets dashboard with access to you know, information um, on cryptocurrencies primarily right now, we're gonna be expanding that. Uh, you know, we've started to expand it to other asset classes. So if you wanna, if you wanna check that out, go to my website at intothecryptoverse.com. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, and uh, again, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.